Phospholipid molecules are amphipathic, and what that means is they have this natural ability, they have the propensity to form bilayer membranes, as we discussed in the previous lecture. And we can actually utilize their propensity to form these cell membranes, these bilayers, to actually create these specialized lipid vesicles we call liposomes. And liposomes can be very important because we can use liposomes to basically study the permeability of cell membranes and we can use liposomes to basically deliver drugs and things like DNA molecules to the cells of patients. So what exactly does a liposome actually look like? Well, a liposome is basically this aqueous compartment that is surrounded by a bilayer, a membrane that consists of two layers of phospholipid molecules. So this is what it actually looks like. So it's kind of like a cell, except it's much smaller, and inside this compartment, we don't have organelles, the cell nucleus, or anything like that. But we can put in special molecules, as we'll see in just a moment, like drugs or DNA into this compartment, and that can be delivered to cells of our body. So liposomes are relatively small, so about 50 nanometers in diameter aqueous compartments that are surrounded by phospholipid bilayer membrane. So essentially the red portion is that nonpolar hydrophobic region of those phospholipid details, and these blue sections are basically those polar heads. So we have one side, one leaflet, and the other side, the second leaflet. And so this is the bilayer membrane. This is the internal compartment, and, it's separ and it is separated from the external compartment by this bilayer membrane. Now, the question is, how do we build these liposomes? Well, if we want to build a liposome that is about 50 nanometers in diameter, this is the method that we have to follow. But you should know that we can also build larger liposomes if we use other techniques. So let's suppose we have an aqueous solution and then we have a second solution that contains the phospholipid that we want to use to actually create that bilayer membrane. So what we do is we basically mix these two solutions and because the phospholipids won't mix very well in the aqueous solution, we basically form these two separate layers. So we have the aqueous layer and we have that phospholipid layer. Now, to actually allow these phospholipids to spontaneously form these vesicles, these liposomes, what we have to do is we have to disperse these phospholipids within the aqueous solution. And in order to disperse these phospholipids, what we do is we basically undergo a process known as sonication. And what sonication does is it uses the energy that is stored in sound waves. So we essentially bombard our solution with sound waves and the energy stored within those sound waves basically disperses and agitates the solution of phospholipids, allows them to basically move around and disperse within the aqueous solution. And that's exactly what allows us to form those liposomes, these vesicles that consist of this bilayer lipid membrane in which we have this internal aqueous compartment that is separated from the external aqueous compartment. So once again, lipid vesicles can be formed by mixing a lipid solution into an aqueous solution and then sonicating the solution. And sonication involves bombarding the solution with sound waves. The energy carried within the sound waves is used to basically increase the energy of these phospholipids and that increases the kinetic energy and so it disperses all these phospholipids and that's exactly what allows these phospholipids to actually collectively aggregate and form the bilayer membrane and form these liposomes of interest. Now, we can also actually place uh, specific types of molecules, molecules of interest, into the internal aqueous compartment of our liposome. 
And the only thing that we really have to change in this procedure is instead of using a regular plain aqueous solution, we use a solution that contains that molecule of interest. So for instance, let's say we want to input, we want to insert amino acids into this particular internal compartment. And so instead of using the aqueous solution, we would use an aqueous solution of amino acids. So we take the aqueous solution of amino acids, we essentially mix them with that phospholipid solution, the phospholipids that we want to use to form that bilayer, and then we sonicate our solution. So this is basically what takes place. We have the individual amino acids shown in purple. We have these individual phospholipid molecules, which as a result of this bombarding of sound waves, basically disperses and allows them to actually form the, this bilayer membrane as shown in this particular diagram. And so what happens is some of these amino acids will randomly end up within the internal aqueous compartments as these liposomes are actually formed as these phospholipids spontaneously and naturally form this bilayer membrane. And other amino acids will end up on the outside portion of that cell membrane. And so now to separate these amino acids in solution from the liposome of interest, all we have to do is undergo some type of purification process. So for instance, we can use dialysis or gel, um, uh, gel filtration chromatography to basically separate and isolate those liposomes of interest. And then we can, for example, use those liposomes to basically study the rate at which these amino acids actually leave that cell membrane. And what that tells us is it gives us the permeability of the cell membrane to that particular amino acid. And we can conduct many different types of experiments that basically provide us with information about different aspects, different properties of that membrane, such as the permeability of that membrane. Now, we can also use them to basically deliver drugs and other things to patients. For instance, let's suppose a patient has some sort of tumor in their body, and a tumor is basically a collection of these cancerous cells. And so we can build these liposomes and we can direct these liposomes to the cancerous cells of the tumor. And what happens is because the cells of the tumor are basic also contain the same phospholipid bilayer membrane, these liposomes can fuse with the cell membranes of those cancerous cells and that can in turn inject whatever drug is found inside the internal aqueous compartment into those cancerous cells and that can kill off off those cancerous cells. So the point is liposomes can be used to study the properties of cell membranes or they can be used to deliver drugs to patients. Now, the final thing I'd like to mention about liposomes is we can also actually build liposomes that contain proteins embedded inside the liposome. And we can use these types of protein liposome structures to study the properties of the proteins that exist within the cells of our body, within the cell membranes of our body. So how do we build, how do we actually embed, embed these proteins into the bilayer membrane of liposomes? Well, all we have to do is we basically take the proteins of interest and we mix them with detergents. And then we mix that with that particular phospholipid solution in the aqueous solution. We once again sonicate and that allows us to actually embed those proteins inside the liposome. And we can carry out many different types of experiments to basically study the properties of the proteins embedded inside the cell membrane. So we see that we can actually use the natural properties of lipid molecules, their ability to basically spontaneously form these bilayer membranes to actually build very useful structures, these lipid vesicles known as liposomes.